Um, second of all, holding an election app was horrible and painful and awesome and great and I want to talk about the lessons that I learned doing it. Okay. Ready? Yes. Five space. Africa's mission is to uh, create an open data society where we encourage <coughs> governments and uh, non-governmental organizations with interesting data to uh, free it up and let civil society have its way with it. It's also about making sure that when data is available that it gets used. You don't think there's a purpose in creating... Yeah. Does that mean we, does that mean we have the right to any data or just data that protects our information? It's we have a right of access to any information held by the state. Semicolon. I would say that means any day. Um, well, really yeah. But if it's to protect your rights, it's more specific. It's yes. Not so if you, can go to, if you can go to a company that has information, which, like personal information, if you get personal information, that's also. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so my only limitation mm -hmm. really is with if it's secret information. Apart from that, government is required. Um, so yeah, we didn't believe that there was a purpose in creating open data that wouldn't get used. Uh, otherwise, the initiatives to create open data would soon dry up if there was no consumption. So we want to create a, an environment of production and consumption. Um, I need more on the production side, I'm more on the consumption side, and that's uh, what I work on is data journalism specifically. We want to create an environment where data journalism becomes the norm in South Africa. Uh, and um, that our readers or end users uh, become used to consuming data and start to expect it to be demanded. For someone to make publications aware that data is a very, very valuable resource to produce. Okay. <coughs> okay. Before there was elections in 2014, there was elections 2009. <laughs> um, I was working at the Mail and Guardian then. I was technology uh, manager of NGO mine. And hey, this is what the website Mail and Guardian looked like in 2009, according to Wayback Machine. Sorry, we don't have that photo. I don't know what it is. Um, so basically, we had very much a new site, and then we had this was our big play for 2009. We'll go to the next site. This is what it looked like. Okay, it was like a shoot it out kind of style poll predictor. And you'd answer a bunch of questions. Uh, we were pretty hard on this uh, with political analysts and stuff to get a short bunch of questions that would then match up to parties. We also used that to feed that information to us to predict at least how our readers were going to vote or would vote if they actually voted on issues and not personality from parties. Unfortunately, I think the reality is issues don't matter quite as much in South Africa as they should. Um, Randomly clicking about quickly to get a screenshot today, I would vote for ID if I can. And, oh, there we go. Um, this was built in Flash, because there were people who used back then, you know. Um, if you wanted an interactive website, you built it in Flash. Um, things we didn't think about. Will this work on mobile? Who the fuck cares? What is mobile? You can't word use this on your little Nokia 3310. You must be kidding. You know, even if you had a smartphone, you know, it wasn't that smart. You weren't going to try and build anything. Interactive, they could maybe get the news. That was it, that was all they were allowed to do. Um, so, Flash was pretty heavy. Um, it, was, it was built and it was built for a desktop browser. Okay. <coughs> this is a uh, News 24, so I just kind of got it as a. Uh, to kind of look at that. What I found interesting is I first went to their uh, front page for that, you know, for around, you know, it was close to the election time. They had no election news on their front page. They had one little button, election, PR election thing here. It's like, if it bleeds, it leads. That was definitely News 24's motto then. Uh, I think they might have changed that a little bit now. It's like, if it gets hit, it leads. No. Cool. Um, so then, there was this, fortunately, we had a, something that happened in between 2009 and 2014. Or 2012, funny enough. Um, and that was the, anyone? Hmm? What? No. <laughs> uh, American elections. Uh, 
Uh, so, ready? It's a terrible mouse. <laughs> non-responsive. Non-responsive mouse. We, uh, this is the New York Times election map, which is nowadays funny enough very difficult to load. It just keeps having a proxy error, and you've got to load it like over and over again, which comes up. Um, but this thing is brilliant. Um, it's completely interactive, and it's built in HTML, and it's on the Canvas app. It's a Canvas app. And it's actually very beautiful. If you zoom in, you get like um, all the, all the, all the, all the, all the, 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 the county, you get all the counties and breakdowns, and it's a beautiful map. It's like, you can see this thing's almost being hand drawn. You know, where like, oh, this line would have been skewed. It's just like that beautiful straight thing. It looks great. A lot of information in it. Uh, in, I don't think you can really see it here, but you can, uh, they've got like shifts in voting patterns. So with that, you can use some arrows and links of arrows to show how people, even if they stayed, Voting Obama, they shifted left to right. Interestingly enough, uh, red, Republican, blue, Democrat, red and blue states um, is not an historical thing. Um, the US used to switch it around every single year, for every single election. Um, only kind of, I think since the 1960s or 70s, have they just stuck to red and blue. Um, so, like the red states and the blue states used to be, be fairly meaningful. So, ready? Ready? Okay. Yep. So in 2009, we had Bash. The other thing we focused on was multimedia. Uh, Mail and Guardian actually commissioned an interview with the head of every single political party as an audio, and we put it up as like a podcast. And God knows who listened to that, because it was like an hour-long interview with every head of every party. I remember listening to Mungo Sutukutulezi interview. You know, and started off with like a 15-minute introduction about the guy's entire life, and and this party and how it's changed as a dude. I was like, man, this is boring. Uh, anyway, if at least it'd been video, it would have been like a bit more interesting. So yeah, there's a lot of focus on multimedia. We uh, had just started a kind of multimedia department. Uh, we were very into podcasts back then, sadly enough. Uh, I personally hated them all the time, so I was right. <laughs> um, and you know, we did web, okay. In 2014, HTML, data, and mobile. Okay, I love the thing. Why did you just say Eddie? Just go back to the thing. You go. Go quick. Yeah, fuck you up. Yeah. After the 240, don't miss it. Yeah, it's like fades in. Front page on the day of, or well, actually the day after the election, I think. <coughs> um, so this would have been the eighth, more or less. Um, obviously, they took over the top section with the elections. Uh, and over here, live election 2014 results. That's what we're over there. Now, before, in the, in the 2009 elections, we had that big vote predictor thing. That is our the equivalent. That's now the data journalism table. Um, I think they could have made it a bit bigger, but they actually did have it sitting there on the day for quite a long portion of the day. Okay, cool. Uh, this was the News 24 elections map. Also, uh, you have to kind of click through to, well, actually on the day, they made this pretty prominent. It's pretty easy to get. Um, and, yeah, this was their, their big play. And the nice thing is this year, they actually had the election news on the front page. So you mm -hmm. notice there's an election going on. Okay. Uh, this was the Mail and Guardian's map, which we'll show a bit more of, obviously, because this is the map that we I'm going to talk about tonight. This is the map that I made. Um, and, yeah. Cool. Okay, so how they perform. News 24 did fucking well. Um, 1.7 million, this is, this is, okay, one day. We're not talking about the whole period of elections. One day. This is in the 8th. Um, 1.7 million unique users, 22 million page views, 30,000 app downloads for, for their elections app, uh, 39,000 in total, but 30,000 just on that day, uh, 102,000 concurrent users on that map at one point. Um, they temp, uh, no, one third of their traffic was on that map uh, on, you know, for the day. That's something like a 280% increase. 
Yeah, this is from, uh, uh, um, I didn't actually put the source of the data. It is, it's not Media 24. It's not Media 24. It's, it's, this is on the band, this, the stats I got from their report on the band blog, but it came from the, someone else. It's the group that shared this data between each other. Yeah, yeah. It's um, uh, IBM or something like that. IAB. IAB. If you use a Tor browser and you open it the second time, it gets funneled to a new IP. You can kind of use it. Yeah. But not everyone's been sent. <laughs> 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 Might reduce it to 1.6 million. Yeah, we've got to remember you, you need to use it, get yeah. it measured in multiple different yeah. ways, you know, yeah. um, and get an abstract measure, measuring party is as to whether they pass. He said that you need to use it or not. Anyway, that was the stats they put out. That will go too much about that like, because we're not that not yet. But are you saying that's the that's that's the day after the election? Or yeah, so that, that's the day after the election and the results are coming out. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the day after the election is pretty boring because yeah. people are just going and voting. Yeah. Uh, well, luckily it was boring. That's a good thing when you're yeah, yeah. boring. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, Mail and Guardian. Uh, Map accounted for 10% of their traffic for the day. We had 500,000 concurrent users on the map at one time. Um, uh, that's <coughs> Google Analytics and Tech Central, but the 5,000 was actually according to their measuring tool, which is another third party tool, so it's independent, but I can't remember what it's called right now, but I've got a screenshot and they can Trot beat. Trot, yeah, Trot. Um, then the other stats are from our Google Analytics of the, of the map. So tw we had 22,674 unique users, taking up 54,475 sessions, which is cool, it means that people came back uh, uh, we had 85,668 page views. And the cool thing is people were on that map for like 10 minutes on average. To get a 10 minute average page view, uh, yes, uh, one session duration is quite good. Um, cool. Uh, this is their chart beat thing for the, the day. This is their, that of theirs, their map. That's the map compared to all their other stories. That's their front page of the day, of the time. That's how many people on the map and that's how many people on their front page. And you know, you can see like this is the other high performing stories. Um, the only thing that got close to it was well, I think the only thing that beat it was uh, Andilla's death, and uh, it was pretty close. Uh, and the only other thing that close, got close to it was um, the stories. Uh, Same for Media 24, except the stories were more than was bigger for them than Andilla's death. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. Okay, uh, a little view into our servers and how they perform. Um, give you guys a little bit of technical information. We run on a 32 gig Hetzner box in Germany, which we then split up uh, with the send servers, um, four or eight meg, or four eight gig servers usually. Um, and we had <coughs> a few servers doing different things, but they're all sitting on the same particular box. So these charts are from the mother. Tom Zero, the guy at the bottom, so you see all the traffic that comes through for cheese, if anyone I want to refer to my server. Um, okay, that was the, that's from Google Analytics. Uh, like, that was just a little quick snapshot I got. That was their view of people right now, concurrent users. Um, at the time, I was happy that we had 628 at that point. Uh, obviously, mailing volume was 5,000. Once again, it comes down to how you, what you consider a concurrent user. Right? Um, <coughs> This was our uh, connections through our firewall for the day. That was our, what we were doing before the elections. I don't know, having a nice time, not much happening. <laughs> you know, um, and so you can see the current difference there. Um, and the, so at one point we had 6,000 established connections. So that currently kind of comes up with the mail and guardian saying it's 5,000 concurrent users. So this is a view from Google Analytics. Um, just of our session counts. And it's just interesting to see it like, whoosh, it comes up very suddenly, which is uh, cool. Okay. Um, at the same time, our CPU was cool about it. This is our uh, CPU usage for the same time. It's cool, nothing much happened. 
all of this is like nothing's happening in that little bottom there, that's there, that's got like stuff to do. So we've got like an eight ball CPU and we use not much of it. And our memory was cool, so all of this was good news for us. Uh, and that's Ethernet zero traffic, that's traffic going out to the world, basically. Um, and it's uh, per second, I think. And we're doing, I don't remember how much we did, but we, we oh, so it's like eight megasecond kind of maximum throughput of the, over there. Okay. Cool. Uh, and out of interest, where do people come from? It's <laughs> uh, pretty much everywhere, uh, except this big ass place over here. Something they don't like us, and uh, like these people always all like that because they don't think they have the internet. But this is just over a 24 hour period. This isn't over the no, it's actually not a 24 hour period. It's about four day period. Um, so I don't know, maybe this was filled in with one or two people connecting from Western Sahara, which is I think over there, and I think there is an internet. So what is um, the scale there, 1 to 40? 1 to 40,875, which is South Africa. Mm. So that's how, I don't know, that's what they picked up in South Africa. That's how many unique users were from South Africa. Oh, yeah, yeah, unique. Um, <coughs> so unfortunately, because it's such a shitty scale, if you knock South Africa out, you get a much better idea of how many people connected from where. Obviously, from the US and the UK, we have like thousands, uh, whereas some places we have a lot less. You know. Data visualization gotcha. You know. um, uh, just out of interest, what do people click on? This is the top 10. Gauteng, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, KZN, Northern Cape, Free State, Northwest, and Popo, and nobody cares about Mpumalanga. And then Joburg, and then after that, Rotswane, um, and then Cape Town after that. So I found it interesting that Rotswane was better than Cape Town. And then you start getting into the wards and stuff. And suggest that's because Rotswane was possibly contested, whereas Cape Town yes. was. Yeah, we kind of knew. That's, and, you know, and, and I think it's the biggest news challenge in South Africa. Mm. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, I mean, KZN was pretty good tested, but I suppose it's poor. It's not too bad. Okay. I think you'll find that might be proportional to population. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's nice. But again, we're still quite Uh Thank you. But first, I'm not going to talk about I'm going to talk about um, some beta theory. So, <laughs> okay, I like this thing because beta is like raw ingredients and you bake it into a nice pretty cake, uh, just information. And oh, this is like based on a school of data slide. I better add that because some people recognize it, but I made it my own because that's my son over there and the cheesecake his mother just made. Uh, presentation making it look nice for knowledge you have to get the data consumed anyway uh, like I was thinking about this with maps that's you know we do a lot of work on data and stuff maps is all about making doing a presentation there so that people can consume hardcore data with ease and it makes it go down really well cool okay and so first the API is a data there you know, and the raw ingredients okay. so the way we built this thing is we built it on data. And to do that, we thought, well, let's make something we're gonna use again. We already were uh, purchase, that's got Lewin's predictions API, so we use that. Um, this is it, over here. Uh, that's looking at, some, I think, the national results for uh, 2014. <coughs> and um, so yeah, uh, first thing we did, we had the, well, we really had the predictions results for how many years back we go? Uh, it's still 2009? I think no, that's old. 1999. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah, oh, 99, sorry, 99. Yeah. So, in theory, we could have made our map go back to 1999, sorry, we didn't, because, like, we didn't have the shape files. 1999, no one has the shape files. <laughs> <laughs> Do they even have shapes? So that's a good question. <laughs> Just one, I'm winged it. Cool. Um, yeah. this, and then we built something called the Maps API, which looks like this. Um, and I'm sure Zaid can tell us what type of information we're looking at here. Um, machine readable? Yeah, okay. there we go. <laughs> uh, cool, so basically our APIs, what they do is they create, they, they package our data in a way that a machine can read. And our machine would 
be the browser at the front end. And that would then turn the stuff into a map. So we got the results, we got the shapes, plug that together, maybe we get a map out of it as well. Okay, big center of inspiration. <coughs> Manhattan hiding over there. Actually, like I wasn't gonna do it in the but I hadn't thought of it. And I went to Adrian site and he like he was like, ah, oh, done cool elections map, and I thought that's great, I'm gonna steal that. <laughs> um, so I did initially steal the code, but then I ended up rewriting it and uh, not because it was bad, because it was great, I just wanted to do other stuff with it. Um, this, like I started off by using our API to build data and then it just kind of I carried on doing stuff. Um, but I like some of the ideas I took from it is that when you click on Adrian's map, you get this cool zoom effect. And I really like that. I wanted to give that kind of sense of animation. That's also very similar to the New York Times app, uh, map. It's got the cool thing of that sense of animation. And you can still see the stuff around it. So even though you zoomed in on Cape Top or on, on Western Cape, you can see that the other provinces are there. I like that too. Um, and I almost didn't do this with the little flags on the side, but it's lost and I quickly did. So I had to go find all the flags and all the parts. Uh, so you had to write a scraper. Scrape. Did your scraper work or did you just no, copy and paste? No, I just uh, wrote it on Steve, you know. You copy and paste. <laughs> 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 you couldn't happily just take it over. I, I, yeah, no, I did. The problem is we need the one for the new, the new one. Yeah. Um, <coughs> cool. That is the uh, address of that thing, if anybody wants to go to it and check it out. It's, you've updated it, haven't you? Not this one. Not this one. Yeah. Do you have that? Another one has been. Yeah, in fact, you've got a really cool one now with like cool shaded stuff. That's very nice, the new one. Um, but this was my original inspiration. Cool. Okay, so then uh, we started with the visualization. <coughs> so we had that data and the map stuff and started playing with it. Cool. That's what the first, my first map looked like. Uh, and it's basically all those shapes, like provinces and municipalities and blah, 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 all just plugged onto a map to see if our maps API worked. And amazingly, as well, it did. Um, out of interest, for the 2009 elections, they used 2006 shapes. Uh, for the 2014 elections, we used 2011 shapes. Mm -hmm. um, and the 2011 shapes match up to our census shape. So that means we can go look at election data and census data and say, okay, people with no choice like to vote for whoever, no, that kind of thing. We can look at employment rates and all kinds of stuff. More than municipality rates generally only change the local elections because otherwise there would be chaos. People <laughs> unrepresented if they moved into a different. Okay, so then I put some color in. Um, so in this one, in this map, Brown is ANC, uh, blue is the DA, red is uh, IP, uh, luminous yellow is ID, funny green is Coke, um, and this was derided as being very non PC because, like, why is ANC black? It's like, I didn't even think about it. In fact, I just put random colors in. Um, <laughs> but it turned out that way. Um, but I think it's such a cool map. I just love the way this map looks. So it's like a, a uh, it's, it's by war level, I think. And I also made it darker the more votes they got. Unfortunately, black, they all kind of tend towards black. So whether you're black, <coughs> sorry, I'm saying it again. But, um, uh, you know, if you've got like a, a kind of that, which is very IP, which is the same as like that, which is very ANC, which is the same as that, which is very DA. So, you know, but it was just a quick way to see, am I actually seeing data and my map at the same time? Uh, and I came up with this really cool looking map, and I love it. Oh, sorry. Cool. Then we uh, kind of pulled it back a bit, or I pulled it back a bit. So now we're looking at provinces, all the lines. Um, I quite like this map, and go one more. This map, which is what we call a Mario map. It was when I was playing with my maps, and what we call quantization, which I don't actually know what it means, but it's how many edges and how smooth your map is. Um, I quite like these because it almost stops it looking like South Africa and then suddenly you take a lot of your preconceptions away when you look at the map and <coughs> if you look at it as just like a cool weird shape, you can see there's definitely a progression towards like a darker brown down there and this weird blue thing over there. You know, which you know might mean something to somebody. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I did, well after I'd done all that, then 
Then came the struggles. The, I mean, the struggles I've told that, but then came the real struggles. So first was fighting for fucking maps. Okay, let's have a look. Yes. How long in advance did you start to lead a selection? When did you start? Two weeks? <coughs> two weeks, two weeks, yeah. And was, did it come down to the wire, or did we... We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> but funnily enough, not because of me. Um, so, first of all, these are, so this is like the 2006 shapes. And you put the 2006 wards on a map, and you're like, what the hell is that? What, what, what is that? You know, why, why, where, what are these red things? Um, and basically, that's parts of the country that have no wards. There's no wards there. They're represented by the, the sort of municipal, or the district. And there's a single municipal council with four members who all elect a board member. That's what they do. <laughs> there you go. So that's why I opened that's why I came. So I can tell you the real facts. I just go, what is this? <laughs> you know, it's why. It again. <laughs> so, I can go into deep more detail. No, 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 no. Okay, so there's some areas then, there's some areas where there were local municipalities. We have a council of four members who all elected by proportional representation across the whole municipality. And there are other areas which have no local municipality at all. And how many municipalities are in there? That's not one municipality. No, there's a whole bunch of them. I mean, you, you can see the lines on the wall. <coughs> yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm just in red. Of, like, there's a line. It's like Marysburg. There's a line. It's all the places. Line. Your population density. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, population density. But I mean, they could have just had one big water and then like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the way that the next gerrymandered is. They took those vast areas and gave equal representation. Yeah. It wasn't on population, it was on size. Okay, cool. So then we had other weird stuff. This is looking at uh, Eastern Cape and Quasi in itself. And for some reason, I don't know if you spotted this, there's this flipping thing is sitting there. That was, that was That's changed. the old map. That's a change yeah. in 2006. Yeah. There's a constitutional amendment and everything. Yeah. That, that area on a lot, there's a real problem with the maps you get mm -hmm. like from different sources. Yeah. But I um, can't remember the name of this, this, this section Ooh. here is, is now. This, Matatiele. This, yeah, Matatiele has now been put in Eastern Cape. <laughs> and that's been put in Quasim in the <laughs> What's so the boundary now? Yeah. That's what's going in here, right? And there, yeah. and in Tarlington. Yeah. yeah. Kokstad is still in KZN, but Matatiel has gone to Eastern Cape. Kokstad is from Nurmi. Well, uh, yeah, it was once. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, very weird, anyway. Okay. Cool. And then, on the other, you know, do it the other way, and then you've got like things like this, <laughs> which I think are like actually parks. That's just a mistake. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but I think they're parks. It's, like, it's uh, a mountain zebra national park. Yeah, it's a mountain zebra national park. So, but who, for some reason, and other maps we got from demarcation for where the fucking came from, eventually you forget where there's like there's so many maps and you're like, where's this one from? And all along, for some reason or another. I mean, the one map, the one bunch of maps I was dealing with was talking about the northern province. Why is it in the northern province? Yeah, it's Limpopo. And it was Limpopo in 2006 and 2009. So, why it was. On the map. Okay, cool. So I was fighting a lot with maps, and eventually, uh, what I did with wards maps is I just used the 2009 maps and didn't tell anyone. Um, okay, and then I was fighting with IAC. Cool. I don't really fight with them because fighting with them would have been being able to communicate with them in some way. Okay. So you go to the bottom of IAC site, and you see there's like this nice thing National Webmaster at Election Talks <laughs> today. That is not a link. That is not text. It's just a picture that you can't click on. Printed into spam. Yeah, exactly. So we will not be spammed by our citizens. <laughs> um, and then you do type it in, you mail it, and you get this is an automated message. Then you phone them, and like, you know, uh, like in here, list their phone number. Please phone us if you actually have anything to say. And then it's just this like, infinite IVR loop, which can ne never get out of. I tried every combination known to mankind, you can't get out of it. There's no one to speak. But anyway, um, luckily the Maryland Guardian had contact with IAC and this one developer dude and I emailed him directly and managed to, I didn't quite get onto their mailing list or anything so everything starts to come through the MNG but I managed to get an API key so I could contact their, get into their, their API, cool. So we got, we get messages like this, okay, at 9.30am. Uh, 
uh, dry run starting at 10 a.m. and lasting for two hours. This is your only opportunity to test that your stuff works. And you get told about this at 9.30 and it's going to be starting at 10. I was on a train when I got this. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so, yeah, and you're like, ready? Ready? They couldn't have sent this yesterday. Um, and like, if they go to send it on the same day, then at least make it like till the end of the day. You know, just run the thing till the end of the day. Why limit it to two hours? Why do that to me? Anyway, it's because they, you know. So, so all I did is like, I got to the office and I quickly sent up the, set up the thing to just dump as much data as I could. So later I could go through and simulate being connected to the IEC. You know. Um, I actually wanted a proper simulation, I should have had it on another network. It kept unplugging the network cable. <laughs> um, so, eventually, we've, uh, this is the API documentation that we eventually got through, uh, the final API documentation. Came through. I don't know, when did you guys remember what, I mean, what day the elections were? Well, you put it on the slide. Oh, there we go. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> May the 7th. Okay, this came through on May the 6th at 5.33 p.m. We get the final specs, which are quite different from the specs we had before. Like some of them have got voting districts and they've voting districts before, etc. Et in fact, they've got all, some of the stuff they've changed here, but I mean, really, there's like a lot of changes. Um, so it's like we couldn't have, it's not that like it, was a, it would have been impossible for us to develop this stuff ahead of time. We found out the day before the election, hours before the election starts, that this is going to happen. Um, <coughs> so, uh, cool. So, <laughs> however, Meter 24 managed to get a uh, MySQL replication system going with them. It's worse I'm, than that. It's not MySQL, it's Microsoft SQL. Oh, thank God. I actually didn't just pull it in our reply. <laughs> um, but anyway, you could have had, gotten, they got a live replication system going, and I only found that out just before, well, not basically too late to do it or to do anything about it. So they had a direct link. They didn't have to use an API or anything. That's how they got such the. Uh, Meter 24 got the live results so fast, way before anyone, and they're on the party. The Meter 24 website had results before the IEC's own website. Yeah. Um, and they went, and also it didn't go down like the API. Oh, actually, it didn't appear to go down, that's for sure. Um, and there were other issues. Okay, cool. <coughs> okay, so then came voting day. So it was all leading up to voting day. Lots of. Cool. On voting day, oh, so this is what the map looked like at 10:16 uh, a.m. on voting day. So the results aren't coming in yet. So we can't like you know, we can pan it, not quite just yet. But anyway, it's like looking a little weird. Um, all these images are missing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need these images. Um, <laughs> everything's grey, but that's okay. They actually have no results in yet. Um, so anyway, cool. <coughs> this was my day on that day. So uh, can't see. Thing. It was like 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. We threw out our uh, 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 the 2009 awards map that we I've been trying till that point to fix by going in on GQIS and changing this thing and changing that thing. Just <laughs> and I just chucked it out. And now, if you go to our maps API and you pass all the 2006 awards, you'll actually get the 2009 awards file. But you know, don't tell anyone that. Um, cool. Uh, okay, we. Uh, so we have this cool graphic that shows the seat allocation for all the parties. You can mouse over it and show you information, and we chucked that out. Because we realized, in fact, we, we found out, we thought that seat allocation was done in proportional voting. That's actually only 200 seats are given on proportional voting, and then the other 200 seats are done by the... No, I hate to tell you this, but it, the, the, it is actually proportional. It is, it is. The whole thing is proportional, and they subtract the 200 from the provinces, and yes. the overall result is proportional. Yeah, yeah, but it's like if you worked it out proportionally, and it's got the two parties that like Aldermar would have been represented if you done it completely proportionally, and they didn't. Um, they got, <coughs> they got the Constitution like, sets it up basically as an algorithm in legalese. It's yes, it's fully it is an algorithm. Yeah. Computable. But we decided, well, actually, Mal and Brian decided that it's not to run the risk of getting it wrong, and let's just not have that. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Because they thought they were getting seats as well, apparently. <laughs> So yeah, um, we added the names to the map so we could actually tell where you are, and we added the party flags. So how do you how do you count? Uh, I must say, for a good laugh, both of the party flags on the IEC site is like 
hand-drawn, <coughs> faxed through. <laughs> like, like, how, and like, these people must pay, like, how much do you pay, like, 100 grand to become an employee? You can't spend 20 bucks on your logo, really. It's obviously done on the back of a napkin. Um, okay, so at 2, 2 p.m. I went to vote. Uh, I was still registered in Komiki, even though I moved to Muenberg, which meant I got to join a queue of lots and lots of white people. Um, so, uh, then, uh, who would actually know that? Hmm? Who would vote legally? Well, yeah. I need the national image. Yeah, but as long as you mean your problem. As long as you mean your problem. Well, fine, I'll have to do that. I was okay to vote. But, uh, anyway, it was fine. Also, the queue was very quick, so, not a bad thing. Um, <coughs> and I got home, um, made final fixes to the map, <coughs> then I had supper and tried to relax. Nothing's wrong, and I thought I better integrate that IC API because the results are coming out at nine, so maybe I should be cracking. And so I started on that. Um, so yeah, uh, then uh, between nine a.m. and five fifty-four p. Uh, nine p.m. and nine fifty-four a.m. We actually start getting results. It's like really the first time you're seeing this data and you're seeing how it's coming from the IEC, and that was just insane. And like. Stuff's wrong, and we have weird stuff happening, and you know it, it takes you a while to work out why. Adrian was much quicker on some of the stuff than I was. I wish I'd known what he'd known. Mm -hmm. We, the, the API just starts finding out. Yeah, it just starts stopping basically. Badly. And then when you get to the last two thousand results that come in, so if you lose, lose track, you can never catch up. Yeah, and it's uh, and they've, they've got this thing where they show the most like the, you, you request the most recent changes, but there's no like you don't know how far back to go on average, so you're like, uh, should I go past for five for 50, very fast for 50, then I'm going to go back up. Oh, it's fine. Uh, so like, it was like trying to work that all out live. You're not trying to do it like in a testing environment. This is live, so you get real data, your map's updating, updating real time. People are viewing the map like crazy, and uh, it's like lots of pressure. And at one point I was like, okay, I fucked up badly. I'm just gonna wipe out the database and rebuild it. I hope nobody notices. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. You know, stuff you don't like actually want to be doing in a live environment at all. You don't like ever want to face in a live environment. Uh, so at 5:54 a.m., this was the, I, the only reason I know this happened because I sent a message an hour after 5:54 a.m. saying I'm going to sleep. Um, and at 7 a.m., I may ring the bell. And nobody else got up later enough to just like fuck that. Get up, and made it. Um, but then I went back to sleep. And at about 10, I got up and there's like a million missed calls and IMs and like, oh, this isn't working. Oh, we like the, 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 the pop-up bar is going too far over to the right and they built it into an iframe, so now they couldn't put the pop-up bar and whatever. And the board level was screwed. Yeah, so yeah, that was the, yeah. And then the raw board level was screwed. So like when I went to bed, I thought it looked like it was working because I was getting results in. But, so I was asking what the, oh, we'll go to the next slide. So I was getting the, uh, uh, this is kind of the, the process we went through, but I was getting voting district results, but the way I was getting them, I didn't realize it wasn't actually giving me voting district results, it was giving me high, like ward results, I think, or something. Oh, is it the bug where you don't tell it the province? Exactly. And the municipality yes. and the ward yes. is in the whole country. Exactly. Um, but it's not the whole country, it was like, it's just, I think it's whatever previous <coughs> thing it was. So basically it was totally wrong on the ward level. Uh, and so the only, uh, they also didn't release the ward uh, results. They released voting districts, municipalities, provincial, and national results. They just left out the wards. They're like, no, why do we need wards? Who cares? Um, so the only way to calculate a ward was to try and grab all the voting districts. <coughs> and then from that, work out which voting districts on each ward, add them all up, and then you've got to calculate the results for each ward. Okay, so it means you have to get every voting district in the country uh, to find out the wards. There are 22,000 voting districts. Okay, cool. Uh, now there's also provincial and national results as well. So that's 44,000 in effect. Cool. So it takes four. It took us about four seconds on average from our server to do a request. It's a little faster if we had a South African server, but uh, from the from there it was about four seconds. There are 22,000. We had to do it twice once for national, once for provincial. Charge up. So it was taking. It would have taken 106,000. 76,000 seconds, which comes to about 49 hours of all the data, assuming 
we got every, it's one thing every four seconds, which means that the IEC never goes down, IEC never changes the results, uh, the network never slows down, everything is perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so obviously that wasn't the case. So eventually I realized this is like a fighting losing battle. The war, the numbers are wrong. The um, the I'm never going to get all the wars in the voting districts. So we can the voting districts in the end. Um, but the uh, problem is people have noticed that numbers are wrong and we're very upset, understandably so. I mean, it was fine on provincial, fine on municipality, you go down towards something like a big disconnect where you've got like way more people and you're like, what, you know, more people than are in the municipality voting theoretically in a ward. And so it was easy to spot that was wrong once we got enough results in. Um, other thing is in 22,000 results, there's some of them it's hard at first to spot if you go to properly, you know, because we're not looking at every single one, unfortunately, especially at 5 a.m. <laughs> okay, but yeah, uh, cool. So because of that, we basically lost our ward level data. So I decided to turn off ward reporting at about 12 p.m. Wait, so isn't the secret of how you actually get the data on the IAC stuff? It's in Excel spreadsheets that we don't have this written files, and it's much quicker than that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's how, yeah, that's how you did it eventually, and that's how I got the data on. So, I had to kill my babies. Uh, cool. Uh, but a few days later, thanks to you. The irony is that when they sent the data by the time later, they released the official spreadsheet. Yeah. Of oh, you like, like done all the work. Yeah. Uh, of course, that always happens. Um, we have got R wards again, and R voting districts. So now we're not only showing wards; we've gone all the way down to voting. Um, I think that's cool, and I think if we could have done that on the day, it would have been awesome. So on the day, actually, only Adrian was showing voting district. I wasn't oh, but you gave it up. I was. I tried at two in the morning, and I said, "No, I'm, I'm sleeping. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not messing with this anymore." Okay. So basically, nobody showed voting districts on the day. A lot of people. Really cool. Did they go on? Yeah, voting districts. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so anyway, it's alive again. It's my baby. Um, Eat it and give it some sleep. Okay. So, uh, who did the best math? I guess it was best. Um, we needed to pretend quite the most up to date, accurate data by a mile. Um, we had the coolest, I think. Uh, like, it had a really nice thing. It would move really well. That was pretty. Um, oh, I must, uh, Hannah did all the colors. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, you had the most awesome. Uh, and in fact, you, I think you've done more with the maths afterwards than anyone else. Um, we've tried to do some stuff to get people interested with like uh, where are the biggest swing wars and that kind of thing, but news organizations just haven't been that interested. Um, we've done swing war visualization, we've done uh, Adrian's just other thing of but swing wars that make a lot of sense in proportional representation. But it all went on next election. Mm. Yeah, okay. No, it's not as coming and those are gonna be the wars to watch, those are gonna be the wars that can change either way. And it's yeah. gonna change uh, you know, or local elections. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's coming, you know, those will be our next election. So, you know, it's nice and nice to do now, even if it's just get ready, you know, that stuff. Um, <coughs> Adrian did an interesting thing where he looked at, I think I forgot a thing, yeah, change in party share of the vote. Um, that's because just the NC's but you do it for all the parties, and you can actually see where they're growing and where they're shrinking. Quite interestingly, you can see the NC really shrinking pretty badly over here and growing as a, as a big hurrah about in the, the Western Cape. Uh, whereas the DA grew pretty much across the whole country, but it's just specifically in the Western Cape where they got the ID uh, votes, which is good. Cool. Uh, cool. What lessons did we learn? Uh, <coughs> the lessons that I learned. Um, so why do people go to the, the, the News 24 site? Um, that accuracy is the one thing that I, I think I really messed up on, and we really messed up on. No, I see messed up on, it's all their fault. But basically, at the end of the day, uh, we messed up on it because we're the ones publishing their results. And uh, other thing is, don't trust anybody's data. If I don't trust the Electoral Commission, who can you? 
definitely fortsatt till slut. Så jag körde några när jag faktiskt inte gjorde IVR och där så fortsatt. Um, so yeah, but don't trust any data. I mean, that's like a, uh, yeah, we all learn that every day and it's the same as like a news journalist. Don't trust your sources. Understand what their biases are and what their weaknesses are and that kind of thing. Um, check your work, double check it, triple check it, test it as much as you can. Um, maybe we would have picked up that voting district problem if there'd been more checks in place if I had somebody else check it um, and look at it. Also, often the stuff, the, the problems that you miss, you'll keep missing. You need some, another pair of eyes to come and help you out. And I'm told more minders. That's another thing I've, I learned again. Okay. Okay. So anyway, what the 2016 election is going to look like? Based on what the 2009 elections look like and uh, the 2012 in America and the 2014. So this is my opinion. This is my fact. Um, but I think we're going to move more to mobile. It's, it's like, it's not even going to be mobile first, it's going to be mobile only, and maybe we'll think about the grid if we have some time. Um, it's going to be way more data, and I think that's going to be because we're going to have a way more literate, data literate society, right? And people are going to be used to data, and then you, they're going to know how to process it and understand it. And we're going to be better at giving it to them in a way that they can process it and understand it. Um, so, uh, and there are going to be maps, uh, but they're going to be really cool. Some of the things I can kind of imagine are based on stuff we're doing. It's called Wazi Maps, which I suggest you guys check out. It's maps of South Africa, but more importantly, there's tons of data from, uh, it's difficult to see, but uh, it's like population and who voted for what parties, but then it's also, we break it down to how many toilets they have, who's got running water, and we go down to ward level. Um, so you can get like really deep data about your ward, uh, what the average education is, uh, what the average income is for uh, very low level data. We've just been doing a lot of work on this. Uh, you can now embed these cool little graphs straight onto your site. So if you're doing an article or a news report on uh, you know, uh, uh, the Western Cape or on a specific ward, or, uh, you can actually like say, okay, let's just embed this really cool graph on toilets. You know, just think about toilets. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of stuff in there. Quasi maps are really cool. Okay, uh, quickly for the techies, this is how we built it. Um, the code for SA Elections API is built using Flask uh, on Python. It's running a SQLite database. We ran a SQLite database the entire time, so thank God we didn't get 1.7 million unique users or we would be in trouble. Um, and that's uh, the uh, Earl Swift, the, the 2014 thing. Um, we built, I built an uh, interface to the IEC API because it was horrible, so I needed an easier way to query it. Uh, so I built an API for an API uh, using Node.js and Restify. Um, okay, and then I built that a middleware, which is basically the thing I bought between seven and nine, which was built in Python, uh, which could then be fired off through a con job and get the uh, change voting districts and then go and fetch the voting districts and then work out ward results were and then go and get the provinces that have changed and then go get the, the sorry, the municipalities that have changed, the provinces that have changed, do this, do that. Um, then the Maps API is uh, written in Node.js uh, using the, the, uh, the D3 Topic JSON plugin to convert uh, <coughs> GeoJSON to TopoJSON, so it's nice and small when you get it and we do some cool stuff with it. And it uses the rest by. And the front end we used D3, um, Bootstrap 3 and CodeKit. The reason we didn't use Canvas is I didn't have time or skill to really do a really cool Canvas app. Uh, but the same, uh, I didn't use Google Maps because I didn't want to hear other shit. Okay. Uh, you can embed your own elections app. This is the entire code it takes to embed the thing. We can have our elections app on your site just to run that code. Um, we made it really cool and small. So and this is kind of what we're going for as well, the toy script. And And yeah, the big question. All that pain, <coughs> suffering, time, development time, missing out on eating my children, kicking my dog. Uh, was it worth it? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it was worth it. Uh, it was a huge investment of time and, and development. Ali says I need to code this and he's right. I, I enjoyed it. For me personally, in terms of learning and personal growth, it was worth it. 
But for Bodhi say it was worth it. Uh, for Mail and Guardian, it definitely was worth it. But I didn't pay five bucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't paid yet. I have an input. Oh. It's not that bad input. It's like they have ten percent of their traffic per day. Okay. Um, <coughs> so I mean, it's, it's a difficult question to answer. But the main thing that makes it most difficult to answer is how you know, how often I'm going to do this again, and when the next national elections come. Is any of what I've learned going to be of any use whatsoever? Because all that shit that we learned in the 2009 elections was absolutely meaningless. I mean, it didn't matter that I knew how to build a flash app, you know? Um, and uh, in the future elections, will we be building maps with PHP? Probably not. Um, but the thing that did make it worth it um, is the APIs. So the one thing we did is made something that will, will be usable again. Um, the Maps API is really cool. It's being used in Wiser Maps. It's being used for, uh, by the MMA. Yeah. Um, I want more people to use it. Basically, it's really easy to use. You say, I want to see a map of the Western Cape, and or I want to see all the wards in the Western Cape, or I want to see all the voting districts in this ward, and it's probably anything you want. It's nice, very simple, query language, and it just gives you a topic JSON feed of that. Browser, too cool. Um, I want to throw in maps of all the world in it. That's uh, once again, is it worth it? And is it worth my time doing that? So, yeah. Um, and we, the elections API is really cool. It's Fidget. It's kind of awesome. It is awesome. It's used for, I think, does Wizard Maps use it? No, not yet. I, I'm sure they will. Um, that's a really great tool to quickly grab election data and build it into whatever you're using. And it goes back, as we said, to 1999. So, Headline very quick to learn, and you can click through and get more info on anything you want. But it's just going to be fun, easy to read, and like really cool stuff. Um, and the second thing is, we are looking for a two data journalism fellows, one in Joburg and one in Cape Town, for to pay you tons of money to do cool shit. Um, basically, we uh, uh, they'll be working with the, the School of Data, uh, the JFN School of Data, um, probably about four to five days a month. Uh, the rate uh, uh, for it is $150 a day. And you also get flown to Berlin to get trained by the top data journal people in South Africa in July. Oh, the South Africa. Oh, sorry, sorry, in the world in July. <laughs> top, top data people in the world in July. Uh, that's a really cool job. Uh, so we're going to be looking for applicants for that. The, thing, the, the application closes on the 1st. So if you're interested in that, please let us know. And we'll Follow us on Facebook, that's also a good question. Thanks, guys. <laughs>